Hey everybody, today we have an Optima GT1080 to look at. This particular projector was sent in by a viewer. Uh, they purchased a new lamp for it. They, through my advice, we hoped that the lamp would solve it because uh, the lamp is always the easiest thing to replace and return if it's not the problem. So once we determined the problem continued with the new lamp, they sent it in. I'm going to see if I can solve it. Some good packaging. I like how they use the original packaging. That's really great. And then they did include the lamp. Look at the see here. Get the lamp out. Oh, some personal information. Keep that out of the way. So the new lamp is in here. Let's open it up. See what we got. So this is a lot like uh, my HD26. Let's see, that's the new lamp. And that looks fine. This is probably not going to be a lamp problem. I'm willing to bet we probably have a, well, Okay, let me start over. I have no clue exactly what's going on, but I suspect it's going to end up being something with the color wheel, only because this chassis, for whatever reason, tends to have color wheel uh, issues. I don't know if Optima's color wheel manufacturer intentionally decided to make the color wheels cheaply so that the index marks fall off or what, but just, you know, guessing. So, first thing we will do is kind of give that fan a look-see. It spins. It's a little dusty, but it spins. That connector looks alright. That looks alright. Everything looks okay. I just wanted to make sure there was nothing loose or nothing that would cause problems. Uh, when I turn it on. So let's put the new lamp in. In fact, I'll do that by hand. So I don't want it too tight. Plug our connector in. Latch that feller down. Let's see, the uh, door switch uh, is right here. So let's see, what do I have for bypassing that particular door switch? Uh, let's see if this will do it. It's something. Yeah, there we go. That's just sitting there. If you just pick up on it, it'll, it'll stop. So we'll get the power cord. light, red light good. Alright, and power. Heard the relay for the ballast. Went right to a lamp light. We got no attempt to start whatsoever. Did I not have that? I don't think I had that switch down all the way. Let me find something better for holding that. Like uh, an alligator clip. Yeah. You know what? I think I have. Uh, I do. All right. So I uh, got a little smarter, and I used uh, that little alligator clip. Or croc clip, depending. That one's got a stout nose or a snout, like a round snout. So I guess that's a croc. I don't know. I forget what the difference is. I got the roach clip holding it. There we go. Let's try it again with the proper switch held down. All right, color wheel spun up. I just heard it.
no lamp ignition. Yep, no lamp ignition. So we're not getting lamp ignition. That's tight. I never touch these with my bare hands, especially while it's drying. We're getting no lamp ignition, so we probably have a power issue. Let's try it again. No lamp ignition again. There's no way both these lamps are bad. In fact, let's let me pop this one out and I'm going to go and test these. I built a uh, special box for that has uh, three ballasts and a power supply installed in it so that you can test uh, projector lamps. Might do a video on building one of those someday, but uh, let me pause this and uh, we'll resume at the test box. Here we go. So a couple years ago, I built this device. It has 120, 220, and 310 watt ballast in it. And you can select them with that. This is an old uh, CNC controller box. I just reused the box. Don't pay any attention to the original text. So what you do is you pick the ballast you want to use. These are, how many watts are these? All right, so these are 190 watt. So we could test it on the 120 or the 220. We're gonna use the 120 though because it will show that it will ignite. So then we just take our 120 volt or 120 watt lead, use one of the adapters, plug that in, set it off so it's out of the way. And then I just press the go button and the go button will ignite it and keep it lit for a few seconds. You can see that's coming up full brightness. And then I let go and it times out after a few seconds and then kills the arc. So that one's good. So we know that'll ignite and get up to uh, at least 120 watts happily. And then we'll do this one. I'll put it that way, you can see it better. There you go. And that's the old one. So they both light up fine. So this bulb's probably fine, or this lamp is okay, the original. I just don't want to leave it on. And I put my adapter back. And this one, I might go over a video on building one of these sometime. If people are interested. So all right, let's head back up and see how the projector is. All right, so we're back with the projector. We know that the new lamp is good. We also know the original lamp is good. So depending on the hours on the old lamp, once we get this running, eh, you may not need that new one. So might see about getting a refund on that one. We'll see. But now we gotta get inside. Time to go in. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the lens cap because these always get in the way for me. And then figure out what screws we have to take out. Is that a crack? There's a crack in it. Curious. Wonder if that happened in shipment. See? Or if maybe he had it open and over tightened it or something. I'll check and find out. Yeah, I maybe putting screws back in. Because that sure did make a funny noise. Probably wasn't sitting straight. from Optima Europe. Waterford, oh, Watford, sorry. Watford, Hertfordshire, the Watford Business Park. Neat. 
All right, so those all look out. And let's just start popping that off. We have our keyboard. Pop the keyboard connector out. Goes here. Peel the stuff off. I have fresh tape like that to put on if I need to. So there's the keyboard connector. And this is one of those all in one ballast power supply deals. So if it's an electrical issue with the ballast, it's going to require repair on board or a whole new supply. Let's just kind of look it over first and see if anything jumps out as an obvious problem. And between me and you, I'm not seeing anything. Input board looks okay. Is it a speaker? Yeah. It's crazy that there's only literally one fan in this thing. That's the fan. All right. Well, what we're going to do now, let me just clip. I'll do it this way. I want to make sure that door switch is bypassed. Let's, uh, I'm debating if I'm going to take the keyboard out. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. It'll make it easier to test I don't have to hang this off to the side, otherwise I'll have to like balance the cover. And being that this projector obviously has a bit of an involved, well, seems to have a bit of an involved electrical issue, I don't really know yet. I'm going to need easy access to turn it on and off. So I'll pop this out. And we will... Those buttons to get loose. Mm. There we go. That's in. So power. Power is the bottom button. I know, I'm just going to put a little mark so I know that that's the power button. Then let's plug it back in. Latch it. And you know what? This is the uh, door to set it on. And then it won't short out. Plug it in, and this is going to be our last visual inspection before we start um, putting power or measuring voltages. So let's apply power. Blue light, good. We should see the color wheel spin up, which we did. You know, it's curious though, I've noticed, no, oh, no, there's the fan, all right, I was about to say no fan. So the color wheel started and stopped. Just plug that lamp, hey, look at that. The lamp came on. <laughs> that was weird. Uh, okay. Is this not making good connection, maybe? Let's see something. 
it was weird that the lamp came on. I wonder if this projector has that same uh, issue with that P-channel MOSFET like that other one did. Let's see, that's good, that's good. I was not expecting that lamp to come on. That was more of a let's just see what happens kind of thing. You see that? That flash? Now it could be because the, yep. Probably because the arc tube was hot. Cooled it down enough and now it lit. And we should get, yeah. Optima. There we go. That's what I was looking for. No. Menu. That way. Put source, keep adlock, test pattern, lamp settings. I think this is what I want. 295 lamp hours. If that's probably on the original. So there's no way that lamp was worn out. Yeah, this seems to be running all right. Let's see, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a cleaning. Cause that thing fired right up. So. Hmm. I do wonder about if this is a reliability issue. Maybe the, uh, maybe the, Maybe it cuts out, or it's not reliable, or it'll, you know, sometimes work. Let's get a test pattern up. Looking good. I'm going to let this run for a little bit like this, and see if it keeps running. Then I'll shut it down, let it sit for a little bit, turn it back on, you know power cycle it a few times and see what happens but I do wonder if maybe this is all a connection problem with that socket maybe a little bit of contact cleaner will take care of it but first things first we're just going to let it run first and see if it cuts out or not so I'll be back in a little bit all right so I ran this projector for a while and then powered it down let it sit for a little bit and then went to power it back up and sure enough did the same thing it would try to start would not fire the lamp and then stop so it's been unplugged for about two days and i'm going to see if it now comes on it probably will i think we may have another intermittent power supply issue oh maybe not maybe it won't start yep it's cooling down Gonna let it run through this and have it error out for us. All right, up two.
there we go now it's going into full error and that's what I'm kind of hoping to see so next we're gonna open it up pardon me getting here the rest of the way I want to get this out the uh, power supply is probably holding some voltage so we're gonna be careful power cord out of the way now it looks like to get this out yeah got a screw here and screw here I think this is supposed to actually go like that. Yeah. Somebody's had this apart. <clears throat> uh, there's the other screw. And then there's one down here. Somebody had that top bracket out though. I don't know if the uh, customer Oh, they were inside, that's right. It's been a few days since I worked on this. I'm trying to remember the situation. Let's see. Is there a third screw, or is that going to do it for me? I hope that's it. Yep, that's it. All right, now i got to loose. So let's unplug... Oh. Oh, that's not good. I wonder if that's the problem. All right, so I want to unplug the ballast connector. And it stayed in place, and it pulled off. A couple of those were not... Uh, you guys can't see that. There you go, now you can see it. A couple of these were not soldered. That one that tore the trace obviously was, but the rest were not. Let's, let's get this apart. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that wire, I'm going to leave that wire on, leave it plugged in, and we'll use this as a way to hold it so I can solder this back down. I wonder, this might be the problem. That might be everything right there. Let's see what else. There's a ground right here. Let's just give this power supply a once over. See if there's anything blatantly obvious, which there's not. What's that? Diode. I don't even think this probably has a MOSFET on it like the other one. I'll bet it's this, that ballast connector. Let's unplug that from here. Man. There we go. So again, focus. There we are. I think that might be the whole problem. A couple of those were not soldered right. But just to be safe, let's 
pop these screws out and then we will look underneath the board, make sure there's no P-channel MOSFET like on the uh, HD26. And then we'll put this all back together. I'll resolder that end. Yeah, that looks fine. I'd expect to see a P-channel MOSFET in there if I thought that was the issue, and I don't. So, that means this can go back in. And we're going to re-solder the uh, ballast connector onto the main board. See that the main board sends the signal out to the ballast, which is right here. These guys, these are all MOSFETs for the ballast. It's uh, it's an all-in-one power supply ballast. That used to be more common during the heyday of projectors, like you know, 29 through 2012. And then they started building them separately again, and now, oop, forgot the metal cover. And now we're, I guess, full circle. Back to the all-in-one power supply ballast. Alright, so I'm going to get set up for soldering. So, I'll be right back. All right, so I realize that we still need to take the optic assembly out and show you how to do that, not with the drill. I guess I could put a smaller bit in it, but we're gonna unplug that wire, make sure the fan is unplugged, color wheel is unplugged, and then the color wheel sensor is also unplugged. It's a ground wire. We're going to have to take the lamp out, it looks like. Might even have to take the lamp housing out. Or the, uh, like, this thing. Let's get that out. Now, I had somebody on another video try to tell me that the color wheel would come out just by removing these screws. Oops. Removing these screws. I'm gonna look at that. I don't agree with it. But maybe, maybe they're right. The day I pretend I know everything is the day I should stop doing this. So let's see. Because I thought I had to take all of that out because of where this thing sits. Let's see. Move that tape. Move the, uh, the switch wire. Maybe they're right. Let's see. Definitely not. There is no way that's coming out easy. Uh, yeah. Alright. I'm glad I checked. 
because I don't want to discount what other people might know. But that fellow was definitely wrong. Now it's loose. And maybe you could like wiggle it out, but to me that just looks like a perfect opportunity to break a segment off by bending it too far, scratching it. In fact, if I find that comment again, I'm going to let them know that I tried it. And that if they were able to get it to work, they're going to have to uh, show me what model that was. Because this model does not seem to work that way. See, we'll slide that out. No. See, it, it's hitting right there. It's all these screws down the bottom have to come out. That one, here we'll spin it this way so you guys can see better. That one. And this one. Yeah. So that whole piece has to come out. There's no way. So you have to clear. Eh, maybe you can. That just seems kind of. I don't know. That seems kind of sketchy to me. Let's see. I know I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here, but this might be helpful if folks need to replace their color wheels. So let's see. Let's set that back in here. So that's how it would be inside the projector. This is how the uh, back of the lens would see it. So let's see. We can go up. Yeah, I guess you could. You could take it out without taking that piece out. I still think I would take the piece out just to be a little safer. Really, taking it out isn't the issue. Putting it back in is the problem. You want to make sure that you can get it back in the right way. And that actually is pretty easy to do this way. That's well, good to know. I'm going to clean that color wheel before we... Uh, put it back in though. So if I find that post, I'm going to tell him I tried it and his suggestion seems on point. I like that. I like when I learn things. So now let's get the, let's get the rest of this out. Let's see. That's unplugged. Let's see, we have one screw here. Almost. Let's see, I got one here. 
Then we got to look over here. I think there's a screw down there I need to get to. I might be able to solder it in the chassis like this, but I kind of want to turn it so it's pointing down, so I can solder down instead of sideways. All right, that feels loose. So let's get that screw. I think there's another uh, on the side. Let's see. hoping that would stay in the front. Uh, there we go. So where I want to solder, that's actually pretty stable. It's right here. I see what looks like bad solder. What I'm thinking I can do is use the uh, ballast wire that I left plugged in as a way to, to kind of manipulate and hold it. You know, just push it on like that and I can touch it with the soldering iron and get all that cleaned up. I'd have to do that off camera though because I need to be able to concentrate. All right, so I can't do this with the camera here, but I'm going to solder that and I'm going to put a little jumper between there and there but I can't do it with the camera in front of me, I'm sorry. So sit tight. All right, not the most beautiful soldering job, but I'm actually all right with that. I did add a small jumper right there on the first pin to get to that via, but I think we're good. Let's head back over to the other bench and we'll ring this out with the meter and make sure. Okay, so we're back over at the other bench. I have this sitting on a uh, cloth and then also have a wipe over the lens. I don't want to scratch that lens or get anything on it. All right, so let's see here. We have what? white, yellow... So let's see here. Good. That one's not good. Number two has to be touched up. Let's see, number three. No, nope, three also. Hmm. Four is good. Five should be good. It looks like two and three. Need some attention. Oh, come on. Let's get a. It's hard to get a good connection.
Let's see, I just can't get a good connection. Very good. All right. So those are good. Ooh, much better. Let's get the uh, autofocus back on. Much better. So that's good. Let's, let's put it back together now and see what happens. So let's set this back in. I'm going to do this off camera because it's a little faster. I want to get right to testing ASAP, so I'll be right back. And it is reassembled enough. Now let's see if my solder job there held up. Doesn't look like it. Not happy. So I don't know if that's me. Big guns. Let's see if the ballast is even being triggered. You know, Mr. Portable Scope. I love this little scope. I do have a Riggle. Regal, Riggle, R I G O L. That I use at home. But for most things, this actually works really well. Six. Oh. See, this is where I'm expecting to see a turn on right here. Back up and start it over. We go to a lower voltage. Go to the two volt scale. So watch, 4.8, and when it tries to start, when you hear the color wheel fire, we'll see, we should see that voltage drop. No? Oh, I was on the wrong pin, damn it. All right, let me stay there. Let's unplug it. Plug it back in. All right. So there's standby 4.8. The color wheel is going to start. 
that should be igniting the ballast right now. And it's not. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Let me get set up for different troubleshooting. I want to check the pins right on the back of the ballast. It should be here, 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 and here. Actually, let me spin it around so you guys can actually see what I'm poking at. Two point four. Come on. See so four point eight. Let's wait for it to start again. It's either this pin or the one, or this one is start. It's one of these two. It's probably this one. Yeah. So that's working. It's just not actually doing anything. Let's uh, let's check power. The only drag with these kind of setups is there's really no easy way to check the voltage. See, we'll set Mr. Meter there. Tilt you guys up a little. So let's see. Where am I going to get a good ground? I think this will give me a ground that I want. Alright, so... I am not getting normal looking voltages. Hundred and seventy. It should be like four hundred. I don't think I have a working power factor section. Or I'm not measuring it right. Hmm. We're gonna have to get in there. So, I'm going to pull that power supply back out. Stay tuned for part two. Thanks for watching. And we're back on this HD26. Uh, it has an intermittent power supply. So, at this point, it's time to remove it. And let's really... Give it a once over and see if maybe I can hook up some wires so that we can test it with it connected. Get that. I know we had it out and looked at it, but it was uh, being intermittent. Sometimes it would come on and sometimes it wouldn't. I want to see if this has a similar P channel FET like the. Uh, other one I worked on, that other projector, or if we got something else. I also want to get a picture of this power board so that I can see about getting a replacement if available. Alright, so that's off. We're going to take it out of this. Because obviously the low voltage seems fine because we're getting the rest of the stuff, but we're not getting high voltage all the time. Come on. There we are. 
here's the bottom. Let's see, I've got an IC there. Here's our power factor output. That's the ch that's the ballast. Sorry, not power factor. That's our ballast output right there. So that's out to the lamp. That's the coil. The inductor for the lamp. These are the drive MOSFETs. This is the ballast right here. You can kind of see PTVIPH8. Let's see. So we got a bunch of stuff along that heat sink. Let's see. We have counting legs. That's what we're looking at. So we got three legs three legs, two legs, and two legs. So diodes, MOSFETs, bridge rectifier, MOSFETs. We have a switching controller, switching uh, transistor, not a controller, switching transistor here. That's the uh, controller for the switching transistor. I think this is our standby supply. That's a diode. We do have a chip here. Trying to see if that's a uh, TL, no, a BT something. Can you guys read that? That U, what is that? U13? No. Oh. U101. That little uh, TO92 package. see that is a B let's see BT one six nine DL it's like BT one six nine DL I don't know what that is but it's on the low voltage side it goes to all these transistors so that's probably a voltage regulator of some sort but all that stuff was working so you know we have our low voltage just aren't getting high voltage all the time so let's check let's get this in all right so we'll start the power side first you know the bridge rectifier is good, so let's check for shorts. Oh, there we are. You know, that seems a little. Oh, no, that's all right. 0.5. See, I was expecting. I'm reading through that diode. This is questionable, I think. I might have to take that out to check it. I feel like I should check more like a different one. But let's go to the ballast output first. These should all measure about the same. 0.5. Yeah, they seem fine. I don't know if that's what they're supposed to read, but I'm looking for shorts and I'm not finding any. Let's see, that transistor, that's good. Then let's go to that BT thing and nothing. I don't even know what that is. I'm going to have to go look that up. Let me go see what that uh, that chip is and I'll be right back. Okay, so that's actually an SCR. You have cathode, gate, and anode. And now that I look a little closer, I see a little AGK on there. 
So that turns on power to something. Might have to check that. It's probably okay, though. I'm more suspicious about that. This is what creates the... Um, this is the switching regulator for the power factor correction. That's what switches through here, and that's what's creating the 380 that's feeding into here. I kind of want to hook wires on to the capacitor and run them out so we can measure it. I might do that. Um, but I really want to see what that is and why it's measuring what it is. So let's see if we can look in here because it's all riveted. I don't want to drill out rivets unless I have to. So it's really a pain. Let's see, that says PJA. No. That's not the part number. 8Y maybe. All right, we have an 18N50T. Okay, 18N50T, so that's a 50 amp MOSFET right there. That would make sense. And then we have, what's the other one? 18N50T, they're both 18N50Ts and one's not measuring the same as the other in circuit, mind you, but they should be a little closer. So let's see. This is gate, gate to source, I think. So we'll say, uh, reading through a capacitor probably, let's try the other way. All right, I like that, 435K from gate to, I believe, drain. Might go look that up. Oh, look at that. It's creeping up. Let's go from gate to source. Now, this is the same polarity. Alright, let me go here now. See, one of these, if I do it this way, I think that should turn it on. Where's the... That's, uh, that's weird because the other one, the other one's job, let's see, let's make sure I'm telling you the guy's the right thing here. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to make sure I had these in the right order. This side should be creating power for the uh, driving the low voltage, high voltage or low voltage supply. And then this area here is for the power factor correction. This is the MOSFET that switches that inductor, and then that's the flyback diode, which think was good yeah yep so 
this is questionable. I will... How are we going to get this out? Let's see. Do I have a drill bit? It's not too big handy. Got this one. Let's see how that looks. Oh yeah, that might do it. Just want to take that that um, rivet out. That just fell out. Oh, that was inside the, uh, that was inside the rivet. So now I should be able to, I should be able to cut this in, Let's get something a little flatter. There we are. Just straighten that. Then we're going to desolder all those.
There we go. Let's go check some things. That was a pain getting that out. Sonder just did not want to release from the legs and I didn't want to tear any of the vias out. Okay, so let's let's check all these, check everything out of circuit. Maybe I shouldn't have drilled that other um drilled that out, but eh, or drilled that one out, but we'll see. I can always put another one in. So we'll start on diode test and we'll compare to the one that we're pretty sure is good. So that's off. That worked. Let's see if that's. Yep. So that one's good. Let's see what we got here. There's the flyback diode. Let's see if that turns it on. It must be this way. Yeah. Huh. turns it back off. So that's good. So it's not that. I'll have to uh, replace that uh, rivet. Hmm. So if that's the case, if that's all good, then what is causing it? I guess we're really going to have to start checking some voltages. Let me uh, temporarily resecure that rivet. flares it out enough that'll that's fine for what we need to do I'm gonna put this stuff back in and then I'm gonna solder some wires onto the back of the capacitor so that we can check that voltage and I can already get to these just fine let's see what that SCR is controlling. I sort of think my best bet is going to be replacing this board. Alright, so that goes to here. That capacitor might be 5 volts. Unless. No? It looks like that might be a 5 volt control. That's probably working. But either way, let me go put that stuff back in. I'll be right back. I, uh, I soldered everything back in. I did not replace that fastener yet. I'm going to hold off. Uh, we're actually going to hook this up outside of the projector. Let me get some foam so we can lift that up and get to it easier. Alright, that should work out pretty well. I think we'll try that. Let's see. Uh... Alright. Trying to get situated here. Let's see. Positive. 
across the bottom. So, all right, that all seems to check out. Let me just get this set up in a way that I can manage the power safely. Let's go back to here. So that's good. We have our standby light. No smoke. That's always good. Let's get that in view. All right, simple things first. Nothing. Not even standby. Or nothing uh, on the high voltage, rather. All right, let's check the low voltage side. Check that. Okay, so this does switch on the five volts. So that means up here we have five, zero, zero, it's probably ground, zero, 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 zero. I wish I knew where the 12 was. Well, maybe that's the problem. Let's see. Three hundred and twenty volts. One hundred and sixty five. So the voltage went up for a second. Let's go back over here and let's check all the low voltage. 4.2, 12, 12. Three hundred and twenty-two. Oh, that's weird. Three hundred and twenty two volts. Two. See, we should have three eighty. That's why it's not working. I can't check that. That'll blow my meter up. But we're only getting three twenty. So we definitely have a power supply problem. right down then that relay turns off and goes back into standby all right let me uh i'm gonna poke around a little and figure some things out and then i'll come back and show you what i found okay so i found some weird things um actually i'll show you i still don't know where the problem is originating but something is losing 30 volts somewhere. So if I go here, well, I'm gonna get nothing right now, but we'll get our 150, and then watch when the ballast fires, or when it tries to fire, drops down to 100. That's about 30 volts less. And that's about what we were getting here. Watch, because we're gonna get We'll get about 322, we should have 380. So if we're losing 30 volts on the 100 volt scale, and we're losing 60 volts on the other scale, you know, in proportion. Uh, you know what, let's... I have a theory. I have a theory about that relay, but let's see if the AC voltage changes at all when it tries to fire. And if it doesn't, then I know it's on the DC side. 
just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Almost negligible. Yeah. But we're getting, you know, 120 there. I'm wondering about that inductor, if that coil's no good. So that's power to that chip. Oh, that turned off. All right. So this is power to the switching controller. Oh, come on. There we are. 14. Yes. See if that changes when it fires. A little bit. all kinds of power dropping. Let me get my thermal camera. That'll help. Now if I did my editing right, hopefully I can now put up some footage of the uh, thermal camera pointed at this, at the power supply. I uh, have to use my phone, which is what I'm recording with, so I can't do it at the same time. But I was finding that this is warm, where that capacitor is warm. But it was definitely showing more heat. You'll see it in the video. And I, there's a little bit of uh, offset, you know, parallax. But when I held my finger in the video, it lined up. So I'm wondering if this is bad. If there's maybe a leak inside, the coils might be leaking. But it, uh, something's definitely dropping the current. Capacitor, maybe. Leaky capacitor, high voltage cap, maybe. Frustrating, though, when it's, when you're unable to really get in there. So, I'm definitely going to investigate a new power supply, because if it's that, that coil, there's nothing I can do about that. So I'm going to do a little more investigation. I want to look up some of these parts and see what, you know, if they're available. Might pop that out and test it. I don't know. But I think the first thing I'm going to do is contact my friend in China and see how much a replacement power supply module is. And then we'll continue from there. And through the magic of video, it is now a week or two later roughly 10 days maybe the power supply has a replacement now these are used but they're tested and verified you can see the uh, there we are I'm assuming that's what that means is that it was tested let's see I guess that's 20 01, 07 maybe, July. But you can see it's identical to what we're replacing. Let's get the old one out. Just unplug some things while, I'm, while it's in here. Put a little less stress on the wires. Especially the ballast wire. And then the door switch. So... There we are, new, old. I suspect either that or this, one of these two, or maybe these guys, something, something's partly breaking down. I kind of think it's this. I think that this ran too hot at some point and maybe one of the coils is shorted inside, partly shorted. You can see, 
I guess that's glue they put on there. I assume that's glue. Well, maybe not. Yeah, I'll bet you that's what happened. I'll bet you that transformer got hot, got too hot. Because you can see there's like some goo there. And then here there's not. So it looks like that plastic started to melt. Ooh. Let's get a, or something I can poke at. There we are. Just want to get a flat head. Just want to see. Because you'll see in the uh, thermal cam footage that this was getting really hot. Oh, look at that. Da ding Getting some burning. So that's the problem, is this guy here. I don't know if this is a common failure part or not. I'm kind of, I don't want to say new to these, but I haven't seen a whole lot of them yet. I'm starting to see more, so I'm starting to get some of the case history. But the thermal cam showed this getting very hot. And being that the voltage was partly dropping, you know, instead of 380, it was 350, I think. So, I mean, it's, it was just weird. It was, it was a good idea to change the whole thing. I always like to repair stuff at the board level if I can, but, you know, there comes to be a point where you need to, you know, move on. So let's take the replacement supply and let's get it mounted into here. I am wondering, though, if there's something we should consider to prevent that from failing in the future or if that's just the way it is. You know, that might be the case. Get this little clip that holds the uh, AC plug back into place. And then Let's see, I guess that's this one. Yep, one. Two, and four, five. That's a little, a little. How you doing? Get that clutch up a little high. Okay, so that's in, that's in, that gets screwed down on the inside, we have our, where do I put that now, and then this piece, which is going to go across, it's going to be like that, alright, so first things first, let's plug in the lamp connector, that's ballast output, then let's set everything inside, after it's inside, we'll go and put some screws, more screws on. Alright, that's down. Yep, down over the pins. That's good. Door switch. voltage to main board I will see if I can get my hands on one of those coils at some point so that we can maybe see if that's a uh, repairable item for the future let's see else where can I let's just tilt that down a little bit it's all insulated. That's good. That's good. Ballast control. Ah, come on, you little pain in the you know what. There we are. Then let's see. Here we are. The uh, ground wire. Ground wire 
goes down here. This is really hard to do on camera. I'm trying to do it so that you guys can keep uh, a visual on it, but it's hard to hold everything and then keep it open for the camera. So, there we are. That's down. in and then that clips back under there we have this metal piece which goes there and the screw and this should give me enough for testing yeah that's definitely enough for testing. Let me just tie that wire back. So I do expect this to fire up. And then let's put that on. That holds the door switch down. And then I need something to put here. What do I have I can use to protect under that? go. An old uh, battery cover that I 3D printed or something. And that'll just keep that from hitting anything metal underneath. So now let's get our power cord. Hey, red light. Red light good. Red light good. Hey, we have light instantly. Color wheel instantly. Fans. Love it. We should have Optima. Yep, there it is. There we are. That's what I was looking for. I'm going to get the test pattern up. I'm going to let that run for a bit. I'm going to let this run for about 10 minutes. Then I'll shut it down. And then it should power up again if it does. I'm going to keep putting more screws in. And then we'll keep going, and then at some point, very soon, I should be able to reinstall the top with that button, because I'm pretty sure that's all we're going to need now. Um, I think it's in good shape. I'm going to let it run. I'll be back in 10 minutes. Alright, so it's been about 10 minutes. I turned it off. I let it cool down. Let's see if it fires up again. Hey, look at that. Second time in a row. I do wonder about that coil. I think we're going to have to uh, desolder that and do a post-mortem on it. Yep, got it firing up again. That's good. This time I'm not going to leave it on for so long. I'm just going to wait for it to come up all the way. And then let's, uh, I actually want to check. I want to check the lamp hours. I'm curious. Because at first I was suspect of the lamp. I'm always suspect of the lamps first. Because you never know. Here we are. Oh, information hide. Lamp settings. 296 hours. Yeah, that, that's nothing. I, I thought it was pretty low. Let's get out. There we are. Alright. Once that turns off, we're going to put all the screws back in. Get the top on. There we go. Power cord out. Hey. 
Now, that's what I was using before under the keyboard. I knew I had something around. I had it like that. All right, that's in, that's in. So we have one, two, three screws for the power supply. Not that screwdriver. Got this one. It's funny, this, uh, this screwdriver is some, you know, cheap backo. Banco? I don't know. Made in Spain, though. I don't know. I don't know where this came from. I just found it in my toolbox one day. I don't know if it was, you know, from a bag of tools that I bought. I like to buy, you know, used tools. I love tools. All kinds of tools. If you ever want to send me a gift, tools you can never go wrong with tools. Big fan of WIA. W-I-H-A. These guys, I swear by them. These are my um, needle nose, and the Wea logo started to wear off, so I re engraved it with my laser engraver. And then I uh, have my initials on there, so I know they're mine. So let's see. That should be that one. Nope, that's good. That's good. All right, they're all in. That's in there tight. And put this back on. I have a receiver. I'm short one screw. Did I bump one or did I mix up one here? See, I thought these were the short guys. And I know these are the short guys. You, uh, yeah, this one goes here, and then I have a longer one that goes over here because we're going through multiple chunks of metal. Get our little thingy out of the way. This felt weird when I was moving it, but it's probably because I don't have the top on to help hold it in place. You see this blank right here? That would come out if this was a normal, like an HD26 with the long throw. Since it's a short throw, there's no uh, zoom, it's just focus, so they got a blank in there. Get keyboard plugged in, latched, some tape help hold it. Get that out of the way. Clicky clack, snippy snap. I like that. Feels good.
go back to that one. Funny too. I hope they're lined up. Yeah, all right. I'll show you what I was checking there. In here, you can see the the tower. I wanted to make sure that was lined up straight so that when I put that screw in. I know it's not just shooting up the side of it and not pulling it in like that. That's good. Make sure that one's straight too. Yep. Good. Then three more. Lastly, I think it was, which one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five, is that an extra, did I put the wrong one in here maybe, I know I had one extra, that I was using, uh, that's not even out of this projector, this is out of an NEC. <sighs> See, that's my mistake. I was uh, moving my little bins around and that one had an old NEC screw in it from, uh, I was cleaning up and I scrapped down a few NEC projectors a few weeks ago and that was one of the screws from it. So that's that, that's in 296 hours on that lamp. So we're gonna leave that lamp alone. It's perfectly fine. Get the cover ready. That's all there is to that. Now I'm gonna clean all that tape goo off before it goes back, but let's Let's plug her in and fire it up. And then I'll go get uh, some alcohol to clean that tape goo off. Looking good, I see Optima coming up on the screen there. some a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a rag start getting that stuff a little soft oops pattern, grid, there we are, and the colors are not lined up because we're not zoomed out or focused if I were to, there you are.
you can see that's a little bit better focus. So that works out well. So that's it. Um, let me turn it back off. And I am going to clean up the rest of that tape goo. There we go. She's all clean. Power supply has been replaced. It's firing up now. I'm going to let this run for a few hours. Turn it down. Turn it down. Turn it off and then turn it back on again. And go from there. If it does that a few times, I'll go ahead and uh, put the old lens cap back on. And then it'll go back to the customer. So if, uh, if you have questions about your GT1080 or your HD26, uh, put it in the comments below. If you need a power supply for your GT1080 HD26 or similar projector, uh, see the email address in there for the company to contact. I'll do another video, maybe a short video, where we do an autopsy on this board and see if maybe that inductor could be changed if somebody else runs into it. I'm going to look around and see maybe if you can buy these or not or you know worst case I'll see about measuring the, the side that doesn't look melted. Maybe we can figure it out. Uh, probably could just use a uh, 210 watt ballast that I have that's good and see what the value on that inductor is on one of those and you know figure it out. Deduce it. But more importantly, it's working. So like I said, put your questions in the comments, and as always,